for chapter 14 we will we will go over the following learning outcomes first explain why personal selling is important in brand promotion to describe the activities beside selling performed by salespeople three summarize the role of setting objectives for personal selling four outline the steps involved in personal selling five describe the factors that contribute to a new environment for personal selling and six define the responsibilities of sales force management first of all why is it necessary to cover a chapter on personal selling among the various tools of the promotional mix well because sometimes consumers and, and business buyers are confronted with the purchase decisions that are facilitated by the interaction with a salesperson there are situations in which conventional advertising um, does not uh, work towards the specific goals public relations uh, sales promotions or uh, sponsorships or any of the other promotional mix elements are not appropriate or as effective as personal selling and this is especially true for products uh, that are highly priced right or, or that have some technical uh, complication or complexity uh, that requires demo demonstration by the salesperson sometimes you need to customize a, a product or offering to very specific needs so you need to tailor the product to specific needs and this happens a lot with business purchases right when you are selling um, a, 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 a construction contract right for a university for example or for government or for a um, private enterprise you require uh, uh, an interaction uh, tailoring the offering to to the specific needs of the buyer sometimes you have to negotiate some trade-in right like when you go and want to purchase a vehicle at the car dealership you're going to trade in your car uh, in exchange or uh, uh, in order to take it as credit for for a newer vehicle that you will purchase or for some products that customers judge at the point of purchase that customers evaluate there they need to physically be there to to make a decision and in those cases you require um, a qualified well-trained person that can address the the buyers questions concerns um, needs for clarification explanation of details etc and in reality a large portion of the uh, jobs in in the marketing field are connected or correspond to personal sellings a large proportion of the the the, the jobs are um, belong to being being uh, involved directly uh, interaction with customers in a sales in a sales um, type of situation what is what salespeople do in, 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 in particular well we can think of salespeople as the stereotypes that we see on the screen now on this slide right people that um, are not very ethical in their behavior that will lie and deceive you as a customer because all they carry is for your money but although that could be true for for certain individuals for certain salespeople in, in reality um, this is something that is changing and in the last few 
um, decades, there has been a, a trend towards uh, making sales uh, people a, a more professional uh, activity, right? Uh, following the standards of business practice, um, considering the customer's interests and, and, and welfare, and trying to get away from this stereotype as we we sometimes still keep in our mind. But still, there are salespeople like that. But we need to look at what are what are the specific um, activities that salespeople do. Salespeople are not just there to try to give you a sales pitch and try to um, close a sale. They have to do market analysis, for example, right? Uh, analyze the competition. You have to do forecasting of, of sales and um, revenues, right? You, you have to uh, acquire some um, finance skills that help you uh, in these tasks. Uh, salespeople provide or generate ideas for new product development, um, analyze uh, the behavior of, of customers, right, to, to adjust and to propose um, different approaches to, to selling to them, um, communicate, of course, that is part of the central task of salespeople. The, the communication between the firm and the customer, which can be, of course, done through advertising in television, in printed media, but also, of course, through the face-to-face -face interaction or, or over the phone, but a personal interaction with uh, customers. Coordination of the sales um, effort of a team of salespeople, uh, customer service, of course, and customer relationship management. Sometimes the first thing you do when you purchase something and then you go back to the to the seller, to the retailer, uh, to the store, the, the, the first contact you look um, you look for is the is the salesperson who who sold you the product, the agent who sold you something. So of course they are critical. Uh, they play a, an important role in CRM. Now, there are three major categories or types of selling, order taking, creative selling, supporting communication. What, what do we mean by uh, these three categories or types? The, let's organize this according to the, to the level of complexity and the needs that are addressed. Mm. And first, we we have the simple the simple mm, task, which is order taking. Which, although uh, we may not think in that way, is 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 part of personal selling. If you go to a fast food uh, chain restaurant like what we see on this slide. Yeah, you go and you ask for what you want for your combo or your hamburger or something. But the, the cashier in this case, which is not just a cashier, he or she may exert an influence into you buying, uh, bu buying more, buying a different item from the menu, um, may, maybe upgrade um, uh, and, and, and change your mind or into leading you into purchase something they have in promotion, for example, or a new product or item they are offering. So they are not, not just order takers, but they can also mm, influence your decision and of course your satisfaction. And and the same happens when you have other takers who, who, who are more uh, oriented toward the outside. Who are those outside other takers? Well, those are the ones who, 
mm, do not receive a customer or a client coming to your store to your establishment but you you make the calls to to the outside to other businesses to other prospects that you try to um, take an order let's say you want to uh, in a retailer setting right you want to uh, order more of the inventory for certain product right which is a routine frequent purchase that you do well you just take an order for more of the same product you have um, sold in the past then you have the more traditional type of selling that we we are probably thinking about in, in in terms of this chapter which is creative selling the creative selling is as the name implies uh, it requires a, a a challenge for the salesperson um, because you have to ad ad adapt and adjust your sales effort um, to convince and to persuade a buyer who is not coming like in the order taking uh, situation isn't it's not somebody who is sold already it's somebody that you need to convince to make an effort uh, you have of course as we see on the screen people who sell real estate people who sell cars etc uh, you have sometimes those are usually individual type of sales you have only one salesperson else or sales agent but sometimes you have team selling right especially when you have uh, some projects i'm thinking for instance here at the university if there is a vendor um or a a, a business who is trying to sell some equipment right like copy machines and printers etc office supplies and probably you will have two or three members of of that firm of that firm who will come to to try to sell us their equipment and one team member will be in charge of um, talking and, and trying to sell on the product features on the benefits right on the actual um, attributes and specifications of, of the copying machines or printers but then you have another team member who is in charge more of the financial um, plans of what type of financing they offer uh, or leasing for example leasing programs so you have more than one uh, individual more than one salesperson who work in team trying to um, accomplish this sale to to close this sale sometimes you have seminar selling right uh, in which you have an approach of kind of more service oriented um, uh, approach here at the university we have for example insurance companies or retirement plans companies who do these seminars for faculty and staff um, information and, and to some extent education um, seminars but at the end what they try to do is of course to offer their product their service and talk about the benefits that that they uh, can provide to to staff and employees system selling this is um, a little bit more complex in terms that you have for example large projects large purchases for construction for example in which you as a buyer you deal with one large organization with one seller who incorporates different uh, different um, participants in, in a in a system um, in a system uh, selling type last but not least another type of selling is that of supportive communications 
what do we mean by this? We have uh, here the type of <clears throat> the type of uh, selling such as missionary salesperson. These are um, calls on accounts to to monitor buyer satisfaction and update uh, their needs. For example, uh, many salespeople carry out missionary sales through telemarketing, right? Through telephone or computer communications, which are supportive of other tools in the integrated marketing communication effort. They are supportive of advertising. They are supportive of public relations and sponsorship, etc. So what they do is that they um, complement other forms of promotion. You have detailed salespersons also. This type of agents or representatives introduce new products and provide product information to potential buyers without trying to make an immediate sale. We can think, for example, of um, representatives in the pharmaceutical industry. They visit doctors, right, physicians, uh, promoting new drugs and, and medicines, right, with the expectation, with the hope that they will prescribe those medicines to, to their patients, right? Um, this is linked to the type of influencer uh, programs. Remember, we talked in chapter 13 about professional influencers programs, right? Like those used by pharmaceutical companies. Those used also, for example, by uh, publishing companies, the different, the different publishers that publish books, uh, textbooks for college, some of those that you are using uh, in the program. Well, we have constant communications coming, like we see here on this screen, um, communications coming from representatives of those publishers trying to get us as faculty members to know the materials to revise or uh, uh, evaluate their textbooks uh, with the hopes of um, adopting eventually the textbooks so that you uh, use these textbooks in the uh, in the semester so one more time, they are not trying to sell immediately right now, um, but they, they are trying to influence a decision that will later on um, represent placing an order with them. <clears throat> what are the, the objectives that personal selling um, has? First of all, a salesperson tries to create an, an persuade prospects about a competitive advantage that your product or service uh, represents, right? So what is the benefit? What is the, the strength or what is what makes this product unique or so good that um, you, you, you want to buy? It? You also have to have soft skills and, and Treat customers in a unique way. Treat buyers in a way that makes them feel important and that that you are interested in solving a need or a problem, right? So what is crucial here is that the salesperson does uh, the customer. Sorry, the customer does not feel that they just want to sell you something but the customer must have a trust and confidence that the salesperson really wants to help him or her to uh, to solve a, a an issue or a necessity manage relationships for mutual benefits again this is something that is accomplished by focusing on a relationship for which there is 
a win-win situation. The customer should understand, ideally speaking, um, be convinced that the product, the service, the price, um, the company and, and, and the people that is being offered really uh, represent a superiority over competitors, over other options. So the customer must feel that um, he or she really is benefiting and, and a problem is being uh, addressed. And of course, on the other side, that the company uh, is, is able to provide this satisfaction, uh, um, this solution to a problem in exchange of, of course, of, of a benefit, right? Of, of money, of a payment. So this is not uh, about only one of the two sides getting benefited, but uh, both parties winning and, and, and having a uh, mutual benefit. Of course, the another objective is that the salesperson will control the communication. Once again, sales people do serve a role as communicators, as <clears throat> as channels to communicate with their uh, prospects in a face-to-face -face personal interaction uh, form, which can be done, of course, through other mass media, mass mediated channels, but this is a complement to the uh, broader marketing communication efforts. Now let's let's look at the steps in the sales process. Some textbooks or some materials probably will not break down into into seven steps as we see here. Maybe other materials or textbook will will have um, six or five, maybe. But I think it's necessary to look to those um, in this level of detail because each each of these stages has a purpose, as as we will see. First of all, the preparation. A sales process uh, or a sales effort is not something that starts with a presentation or a sales pitch. It's something that has to be planned in advance, right? And part of the discipline and the skills that salespeople are required to have is to, to plan ahead of time, right? And prepare relevant information in order to deliver a targeted and persuasive sales message. So have to analyze industry trends, have to look at uh, existing uh, customers and also potential customers, what they have purchased, those who have purchased in the past, use your databases, your marketing information systems, data that, that you have in hand so that you can um, have a better approach before actually picking up the phone and making a call or setting up an appointment for a self presentation. This has to be done prior to that. Have to be careful and precise in, in prospecting, in selecting those leads or generating the leads um, for new clients for uh, those who you will, those prospects that you will talk to and try to have place an order, right? And this is done through getting references from, from past customers, from previous uh, purchasers. Also uh, looking at directories, you can of course nowadays obtain uh, directories or purchase databases from banks, from credit card companies, from a number of firms that that sell these um, listings, and of course the quality will depend on, on on the price. Of course, the the most affordable um, directories and 
and listings do not have probably the, the ideal quality, but you have also census data, you have sometimes sources or leads coming from other of your marketing efforts. Remember we talked before in the semester about sales promotions, right? You have customers who maybe return a, a form with their information and contact uh, phone number and emails, or probably they filled or completed uh, a data form online in order to get a discount or to, uh, to have some uh, information delivered to them. And then that database, remember we talked about direct marketing, that database will be a, a source for potential leads. What you have to do after prospecting and selecting those, um, remember prospecting will be largely tied to this concept of segmentation. So you have to identify a well-defined um, profile of potential customer or prospect who will have higher likelihood of buying your products. So this is when you establish then an initial contact, right? And what you want to do through this, through this stage is to break the ice, start building a bridge, a link with the, uh, with the uh, prospect, which is a preparation for the actual sales presentation, right? Here you try to have the prospect um, lower the guard and, and be open to listen to you. What you want pretty much at this uh, stage is to gain the confidence of the potential customer, not because he or she will for sure buy at this moment, we are not there yet, but you want them to be available to listen to you, open to listen to you and hear what you have to say. It is later in the presentation part where you will follow a series of um, recommendations and practices in the industry according one more time to, to the product category, to the, to the business, uh, in which you are at. So there are, of course, differences uh, in, in terms of, of, of better practices for certain um, sectors. It's not the same uh, selling a car, right, as selling real estate or selling a timeshare in a resort. So it depends. Uh, but overall, there are Three, three approaches that we can uh, discuss. The first one is the so-called canned presentation, right? It's something that comes like in a can, you have something that you as a salesperson present to all prospects, to all types of potential customer without any difference, without any variation. So that is of course not recommendable. That is probably the way it used to be uh, in the old days where you had a prepared speech and that um, sales pitch is something that you repeated over and over with every single prospect, with every single potential customer without doing the necessary adaptation according to their, to their specific needs or, or, or characteristics. So that's not what uh, you want to do because it's, it's been shown that it doesn't work uh, well. The next type of approach is the attention, interest, desire, action or AIDA. I, um, I think some of you may have heard about this concept, um, if not in this course, in other courses in, in marketing. The attention, interest, desire, action is a sequence in which 
the presentation uh, follows a route that tries to first gain the attention of the of the prospect and then generate interest and a desire that ultimately will lead to to action now that AIDA concept may work in some cases in some instances in others probably will not right for example if you don't have um, a lot of time uh, available to do your presentation if for example for some reason the prospect is not um, willing to give you more than 10 minutes because he's a busy person or he's a busy executive or uh, for some reason you don't have more than 10 minutes maybe it will be hard to to develop and go over all these sequences and generate attention and interest and then desire because you have limited time uh, for doing your presentation so th there are limitations in this concept so the the one that the approach that it's it seems to work better for the generality of um, uh, sales situations is that which is focused on need satisfaction and here the the concentration is on realizing or, or, or acknowledging what is the need that that prospect has what is what you your product um, can do to, to solve that need and, and one more time we need to step back a little bit and think about the preparation and the planning process right some steps before if you did that part if you planned your sales uh, presentations and you had a, an appropriate prospecting of potential customers then you know Bef even before the self presentation you know that there is a need that that company will uh, will have and that your product can satisfy otherwise if you don't do your planning and your prospecting appropriately then um, you 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 probably are in risk of going to a presentation and suddenly finding out that that the prospect does not have a need that you can solve does not have a need or maybe they have a need but your product what you have to offer and sell to them is not the most appropriate um, for for solving that need right so basically this is this is what the need satisfaction approach uh, is concentrated on on need development um, the awareness uh, of that need articulating that need relative to to what you have to offer and demonstrate how your product fulfills the need now there are different formats right um, or vehicles if you want to say it can be face to face right in a type of consultative or consultative selling it can be um, through the telephone, right, in a telemarketing approach. It can be through video conferencing or through Skype or other um, web-based um, communication service. So regardless of the format, the need satisfaction approach can be implemented and, and that's what you want to um, to do focus on, on on how your product can solve a problem or improve the efficiency of the operations or save money etc so the, the different uh, benefits of course that they will vary according to to the situation but but there should be something that you have clear before the self presentation that you will stress or you may discover there or uh, add some other um, benefit that you find out you can provide um, but but remember you have to focus on how 
the product features um, translate into advantages and benefit. Don't focus on the features only, but you have to focus on how those product specifications or characteristics or um, um, design, etc., et how they are reflected in benefits for the for the customer. If you sell an equipment that has a certain technological advances, well, you, you probably will not um, sell by just saying that it's the newest technology, but you have, want to focus on how that technology allows the prospect, the business, the organization um, to save money, for example, right? Because it's a more energy efficient equipment and therefore you will pay less on the on the electricity bill. Focus also on the marketing plan. What is the marketing plan? This is especially important for retailers. When you sell to retailers, you want not just to say this is the product that you can carry on your on your store, but also you can say this is how we will support you in delivery the product or installing the equipment or support you with promotion and displays and merchandising material or training your employees. So there are a, a, a different additional benefits that, um, that go beyond the product itself. So emphasize that, of course. And well, last but not least, the, the business proposition. What is the business proposition? This is what is the price, right? That you could give, what are the discounts? Mm, what is the return on investment? This is important because sometimes um, a major selling point will be how much the retailer, in this case, uh, will make if they carry your product and what will be the expected um, returns um, by selling it to the final consumer. Of course, there will be objections in many cases, not always, uh -huh, but uh, those of you who have worked uh, as salespeople, um, you know that uh, ideally speaking, you, you don't want to have customers with objections, but, but this is a fact of life. You have uh, sometimes prospects who are not convinced 100%, uh, so you still need to work on those. Um, I think the, the most important thing here to, <clears throat> to consider is that uh, these are opportunities for handling and, and overcoming this objection because they may they may be real objections. I mean, it is possible and in many cases it's, it's the case that uh, a customer is, is really not persuaded because there is a real and authentic um, legitimate reason for them to be a skeptical or not to understand um, how the product works or how that will provide benefits to, to him or her. So the objections, um, the most serious objection relate to the buyer's perception that the product is not well suited to them for solving their need. And if that happens again, it's because something in the previous stages was not conducted um, in the right way. If at this point, after the presentation, the customer does perceive that the product is not good for them, it's not what they need, then something went wrong. Maybe the prospecting, maybe the, um, the emphasis or the sales pitch focus on the benefits for the problem they have. So 
uh, it may be a legitimate reason for them not to be convinced. Sometimes it'll be a, 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 a problem with the um, with the price. So our real objection could be the money. If that's the case, but the customer is convinced, convinced that is <coughs> sorry. If the customer is convinced that the product is really what they need to solve an issue they have and the problem is the money, then you can work something out. Maybe you can work something out in terms of the financing of the uh, of the product a, a discount maybe so there is always some room to work on in, in order to overcome objections hopefully that leads to the closing of the sale <coughs> Um, you have to ask for 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 this sale. You have to ask for the order. Only forty percent of the time, a salesperson actually asks for the buyer to to place an order. Mm, look at the body language. That will, in many times, tell you when when a customer is really interested and is ready to buy is ready to to accept a deal or negotiate um, there are a number of techniques that we will not cover here because that's something that requires a a whole semester for for going over um, professional selling but for example suggestive purchases right when you realize that the customer uh, that you feel that the customer is ready to to buy because of the body language because of the questions that he or she is asking <clears throat> then you can use selective sorry suggestive purchase right you go buy a car and the salesperson tells you so which so which car you 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 want you would like to buy uh which one are you gonna take the the blue one or the red one so that's that's something that you expect a response from from the customer and that will tell you whether the customer is ready or not to close and this may be an iterative process sometimes you need to go back to overcome another objection right because here she may say, well, yes, I like the red car, but hold on, I need, I still need to, to be uh, persuaded on something else. It's not ready. And follow up. Don't forget that the customer satisfaction will depend not only on what happens during the selling process, but also after even after they have um, closed the, the deal. So ensure that all commitments are fulfilled. If you are the salesperson, you have to look as, as a salesperson to some immediate matters such as monitoring the shipping and delivery, the installation, <clears throat> the, the warranty, the financing, etc. And some other things that are more in the in the mid to long term, right? Send appreciation notes. Um, you have to handle sometimes complaints even after you have sold the product last month or two months ago. And suggest new products or other related products later on. Just say hello. Send uh, a greeting card or a happy birthday card or email so that of course is something that helps maintain this um, connection with the 
with the buyer. And it's becoming uh, more and more important uh, professional selling because there are changes in the environment that create challenges. Uh, but again, still, uh, personal selling is necessary. Is 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 in some industries the the only way in which sales are um, are completed and the revenue comes through um, face to face selling or personal selling. So um, you have to do better planning with the emergence of technology. Right, sometimes you have to complement your personal selling effort with other digital internet-based uh, forms of communications so you want to make sure that the salesperson is um, looking at the technology as an ally as a complement and not as a competition right because if you have for example sales salespersons who see the company's website as competitors right because a, a buyer can go online and, and, and do a purchase without the salesperson well there are companies that for example they give commissions or some sort of incentives <clears throat> to their salespeople even for sales that are done through their um, through the websites, right? And you have consumers who are informed and are more demanding um, uh, about um, about what they want to purchase. And finally, uh, the the concept of sales management uh, is is something that is not just as managing the operation or the production facility or human resources. It's not just like all other types of management. Sales management is the responsibility for the personal selling effort met by evaluating needs, setting objectives, structuring and hiring sales uh, people, training and motivating salespeople and evaluating performance. So a sales manager is again uh, in a uh, challenging position is of course very rewarding and compensation is probably um, of, of the highest in the organization right because you make um, your income by commission so what are the the different activities that sales managers do first have to do situational analysis of the organization internally and of course externally what competitors are doing so that you can set objectives right which come according to the strategic plans according to what the uh, corporate in this case um, uh, goals you have to you have to um, to to fulfill for example if the corporate objective is to um, to go following a market penetration strategy so a market penetration strategy will require setting certain objectives for sales which are based more on volume right so you may need to sacrifice or um, downplay other um, considerations because the the priority is to to sell uh, to increase market share, right? So the objectives will be depending on those higher level um, uh, uh, goals. You have to do budgeting in terms of the salaries and the commissions of the salespeople you have to plan for spending on recruiting sales in sales 
um, there is a high turnover. Well, it depends on, on which industry or which sector, but uh, uh, in many sectors, there is a very high turnover and you have to be constantly recruiting new uh, new salespeople. You have to plan for travel expenses, uh, the cost of promotions, uh, advertising specialties, etc. Uh, compensate. Uh, sorry, the the type of budget selling exp uh, expenses. Well, you can use a percentage of sales approach, just a fixed percentage of the total volume of sale, which is very simplistic, um, but it doesn't uh, recognize um, the 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 specific needs of the sales force and it does not account for variations in, 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 the, in the business cycle, for example, right? It does not uh, take into account other conditions. So you may just get a percentage of sales um, uh, approach for setting the budget, just like you did last year, but maybe this year because of the economy or because of some a regulation that had impact on your business, maybe that, that, that will need to be adjusted. Another approach is that of com competitive parity, which basically is, well, uh, you, you, you take as a reference what competitors are doing, but one more time, you are not taking into account differences in, 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 in between your firm and other those other firms because they you may have different objectives right um, the most uh, recommended approach is the objective and task method here basically what you do is plan carefully what are what are the specific tasks that will be carried out by the self force um, define the required compensation and which incentive programs and then all together they, this will match the budget and the costs associated with this requirement so of course it's more time consuming and more um, intensive in terms of uh, having to do a more careful planning but but that's the most effective because then you will have a budget that is tailored to your needs in in the uh, uh, in the sales department. You have to structure the sales force, right? As a as a manager, you have to um, decide whether you will organize your teams based on a product line, or maybe focus different sales people to to specific customers. So you have an account, for example, um, for certain um, type of buyer, right? Certain retailers. Um, maybe it will be based on, on a geographic territory. So you just divide the, the, the districts um, uh, among your different salespeople. You have to hire and look at not just the technical skills and the degrees and the um, and the education level, but you have to look at other things such as soft skills, right? And and that's something that is very important for you to develop in um, in college. Not just learn how to. Uh, do a balance sheet or use Excel or some other software because those things you learn them anyway sooner or later but those skills related to the to professionalism to being responsible something that be somebody someone that others can trust right some, some someone ethical with ethical behavior, with discipline. So these are soft skills that are very valued in general, not only for sales,
positions, but in general, but, but this is uh, particularly important for personal selling. What type of training will be provided, right? Uh, how often, uh, whether it's going to be provided by internal personnel or by external consultants, location, um, what type of compensation structure, will it be a salary, right, or commission? Sometimes salary works better in industry where you have high cost products, um, you have long planning intervals, so you don't sell like very large volume very often, but it's more larger sales and more sporadically, not very frequently, um, where you have some level of technical complexity in selling. So that's where uh, usually salary is um, employed. Somet sometimes the commissions is more for low cost products, those that are, you sell more often with more frequency in smaller volumes, but you, you rely on large volume of units um, with few service function, with not much technical complexity, and sometimes you have a combination, right? Sometimes you have both salary and commission. It, it, it depends. But overall, we should not um, neglect that the, the, the sales effort and what the sales department or team does is it should be consistent with the goals of the integrated marketing communication plan should be aligned with all the other promotional tools, advertising, sponsorship, direct marketing, public relations, etc.